Welcome back everybody. Today we're going to be getting into how to clean your Mossberg shotgun. So without too much gabbing from me, let's get into what we're actually going to be using to clean it and then how to actually do it. We'll go over what we're going to actually use in today's video here first. We have some old cut up pieces of t-shirt. If you guys want to use patches, that's fine that you purchase. Uh, you can by all means do that. We have an old toothbrush here. Tipped in polymer uh, gun pick here. You can buy these on Amazon for those looking for them. They're really helpful and they don't scratch up your finish. Not that it matters in this gun because this one's pretty wrecked. Uh, 12 gauge brush here. Uh, also a little uh, thing that has an eyelid on it that attaches to your uh, cleaning rod, which can help you uh, pulling or pushing patches through, which we'll use here in a second, or these t-shirt patches. And uh, the actual 12 gauge uh, cleaning rod here, or shotgun cleaning rod I should say, I believe I got years ago at Cabela's, but I'm sure there's a million others out there. Uh, we're also going to be using the Break Free CLP uh, Cleaner Lubricant Protectant. This stuff is just repackaged in easier bottles to use here, but um, it's just the Break Free stuff. You can buy it really anywhere, Walmart, Amazon. Um, there's plenty of good Cleaner Lubricant Protectant type products out there. That's just one of many, um, but that's about it. Uh, first thing you want to do when you're uh, cleaning your guns, make sure that it's clear. Go ahead and inspect the chamber. Also inspect the magazine tube here. Ensure there's no rounds in there. At this point, I'm good to go. We're gonna remove our barrel. To do that, you're just gonna unthread your uh, cap here. At that point, you can pull the barrel right off. Comes off, as you see here. We're gonna set that off to the side. Now that your barrel's removed, and with your action kind of slid back here, what you want to do is you're going to push this pin out here. You can use a any standard punch will work. And if you want to use a hammer, that's fine. I don't happen to have one. We'll just use a multi-tool here to tap it out. Shouldn't be that hard. If it's excessively difficult, stop and take a look at what you're doing. Because again, it shouldn't be all that difficult. And just drive it all the way through. Once your pin's out, you can pull down in your trigger assembly. It should come out like that. And now you kind of want to make a note of what you're going to see here next. There's going to be... Uh, these little bars, action bars on each side. You're gonna to wanna to go ahead and pull those out and slide this forward. One should pop out from one side like this. The other one will come out like that. And those are your action bars removed. At this point, you wanna line this little piece right here up, up with the slots in your receiver so that way you can pull it up and take it out. Now you can just slide your forend off to come straight out the gun. Set that off to the side. Now we should be able to just push the bolt right out the front of the receiver here. And we can. That's a good sign. <laughs> now we're going to take the uh, elevator here. And just all you need to do is pinch a little bit in there. And the two pieces in the bottom will come in. What you're actually doing when you pinch is taking these two little uh, pieces, of these tabs, from the outside of the receiver. Now that we've disassembled the gun, I like to uh, so put some CLP on one of the pieces of a uh, shirt or patch, whatever you're using. And I go ahead and just put my uh, brush on the uh, shotgun cleaning rod, and I'm just gonna push it through the barrel. We're gonna start at the back, the chamber end, and just push it all the way through. The patch is out, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let this sit for a little bit, because either uh, your CLP type products or if you're using a solvent type product, needs a little bit of time to work and break down the carbon and deposits in there, so I'm just gonna set the barrel aside. And what we're going to do now is I'm just going to use the back side of that uh, patch and just start wiping all the metal components down. Uh, you're going to be able to see some carbon deposits coming off. Of course, depending on how dirty your gun is, if it's new, you may see some sort of factory oil and grease coming off. And just wiping it down. Again, if you're uh, using solvents, that's just fine. You're going to do that with the same type of product. And uh, just keep wiping it down all the metal surfaces on all the little pieces. Now we'll look at the uh, bolt and the trigger group here. Mossberg suggests using just a soft bristle brush, which is what this is here, because uh, any sort of metal brush or something like that could ruin the finish on the parts there. All I'm going to do is just brush it there to loosen any carbon deposits that are on there. And I'm actually going to release the trigger here. You want to make sure you hold it with your thumb, let it go forward, uh, so that way it's not slamming forward. Uh, just brushing those parts around, loosening up any carbon. I'm going to do the exact same here on the bolt. No difference. And again, if you're using solvent, by all means, use solvent. That's cool. The thing is, though, if you're using solvent, you're going to, um, here at the end, sort of want to go back and always put a thin or light coat of some sort of uh, lubricant or oil. 
on the parts, the beauty of the CLP is it kind of does that by itself because it's a all-in-one product. So we're just going to brush around there, loosening up those carbon deposits and take air patch and just wipe them all off and you'll see they're certainly going to be black if you shot a good bit. So that's what we're doing. Thanks. Paying special attention, I should say, to the bolt face and you want to make sure you're also getting underneath your extractor hooks there. These little pieces uh, tends to be where carbon builds up and it's very important if you want reliable function that you have those relatively clean. On the trigger group, we're going to do the same thing. Just get in there. If you want to get more detailed with it, you can for the sake of time. I'm just going to kind of do the big spots and in the trigger group, try to get in there a little bit where my fingers can't quite reach. Next, we'll tackle the receiver. What I do here is just kind of spray one shot in there of CLP, and we're just going to brush it all around. You want to make sure that you're not actually, there's a little lever here. If I can see if I can point to it. Make sure you're not actually like pulling hardly on that because you can actually kind of bend it. But just brush around. There's no need to get excessive force in there. And now we're going to use a patch and get in there and sort of wipe up any sort of excess. One spot that you want to take a look at or sort of pay special attention to, if you will, is the channels and the grooves where the um, action bars are going to ride. So just make sure you get in there because they tend to build up carbon. But this one here is not too dirty, so it's not all that bad. But just wipe it up, leaving just sort of a thin layer of the oil on there. And that'll do it for the receiver. With the receiver cleaned out, I'm going to go back to that barrel that we uh, left off earlier in the video. Just put a little bit more CLP on there. And uh, if you're using solvent, you can run the solvent through one more time. And by now, that CLP or solvent should have had some good time to work its way through and uh, really break down whatever carbon's in the barrel there. Lubricating the gun is relatively simple. This gun was designed to work with relatively minimal uh, lubrication. Mossberg designed it that way. And uh, what we want to do here is just put a little bit of lubrication anywhere that we're going to see movement. Uh, so just a little drop here, because you can see where that spring is. It's going to be rotating. I like to put one on each side here of the hammer. A little bit right on top of the hammer. And then, like I was saying, especially if you're using solvent, go ahead and put a light coat of oil just all the way around here on the bolt. You can see I like to put it here on the side because this part is going to move uh, during the cycling of the operation. And it'll work its way down in there, but just the light coat on there all the way around the bolt. The other parts I like to lubricate as well are right here on the forend assembly. These bars that are coming in, just a little bit of lubrication in there. And now we'll reassemble it. The first step in reassembly is making sure your safety is in the on position, because if not, you can't do the next step. <laughs> and uh, that's going to be reinserting your elevation here. We're going to do that just by pressing together, and you're going to want to put it so that those tabs are going to come out of the receiver. And you'll see how they uh, stick out on each side right here when uh, you have it in place. Now we can put our bolt right in the front of the receiver just the way it came out. So when you're putting it in from the top, this is what it should look like. Just slide it right back in there, and now we're going to put our uh, forend assembly on there as well. So you're just going to line that up as it came in. The first time you put your action arms in your receiver here, one thing that may be difficult is to actually get it moved back. But what you have to do is if you're hitting a wall like what it looks like we're doing here, is just kind of move them up and down so that way they get in the right slots in your receiver. And you're going to move those back. You're also going to line your bolt up here with the grooves in your receiver. And at this point, I'm going to put this back in there, take note of it, putting it back in the same way it came out. And you're going to want to line everything up there, your action arms as well as your bolt. And you can see they should all go together pretty nicely. You might have to wiggle them back and forth to get it in just right, like I'm going to have to do here. There we go. Now you can insert the left and right shell stops, which are these two little bars that we took off earlier. One thing of note, if you're new to this, you kind of have to play with your bolt position to be able to get those in. It has to be a certain, I guess, at a, at a certain point forward is a way to put it. And you can just sort of wiggle these in. And on the, it's easier to do this side first, I believe, and then put your uh, other side in, your right side, or left side, excuse me. With those in place, now you kind of want to actually hold them in place to a certain point, And just you're going to insert your trigger group. You want to put it in front first. 
and then kind of work it back. It shouldn't be all that difficult as long as you're holding those pins in place. So there we go. Now we're going to put our pin in that we took out. It comes in from the uh, side as you see it here. Sometimes it'll just slide right in. Other times you kind of have to knock it a little bit. Again, probably the hammer is the best way to do it, but the multi-tool works as well. And this is certainly a working shotgun, so I'm not too worried about scratching or dinging it. You're just going to push it through until it's flush. With the pin in the place, we're ready to put the barrel back onto the gun. You want to make sure that you put your magazine tube through these little ports right here, assuming that your uh, your gun has them. Some don't. Some versions, some models do not. I understand that. But if they do, right through there. Line up your barrel. The one thing that's kind of crucial and really depends on the actual gun itself is sometimes your forend here, which can be large or larger on certain models than others, um, will impede you from putting your barrel in. So you kind of got to work it back and forth and make sure that you can get your barrel lined up there. Which, as you can see here, this, this gun, we've done this before, and I know that it sort of tends to be a problem on this one. And then at that point, you're just going to take, once your barrel's seated in there, which it is right there, we're going to take our end cap here and screw it back on. You just want to screw that down until it's as tight as you can get it with your fingers. At this point, your gun's reassembled. I like to do a functions check every time. So what we're going to do is run the action, make sure everything's locking up as it should, give a little tug in your barrel, make sure it's locked up as it should. Attempt to pull the trigger with the uh, weapon on safe. It should not fire. Put it on fire, pull the trigger, it should fire. Cycle the action, trigger resets, back on safe. And that's all there is to it. At this point, a lot of times I'll just go on the outside, wipe it down with a thin, light coat of oil. And that's it. The gun is uh, disassembled, cleaned, lubricated, reassembled, and ready to go back out in the field. But if you guys have any questions about this video or anything else to talk about on the channel, you can always post below in the comment section. I hope this helps some of you new uh, 500, 590 series uh, gun owners out there. You got yourself a very good gun, and it's not that hard to maintain, as you can see here. I uh, hope to see you guys in the next video.